You're listening to Online Pet Health Podcasts with Dr. Megan Kelly, continuing education for veterinarian rehabilitation therapists. Learn more at OnlinePetHealth.com. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Vet Me Rehabilitation Podcast, and I'm your host, Dr. Megan Kelly. Today, we're going to be doing one of my behind the rehab practices. I really, really love doing these interviews. And today, we're talking to Kirsty Skeet. She's from Yorkshire in England, and she has a practice for fit, called Fit for Dogs. Welcome, Kirsty. Hello. Hi. Kirsty, thanks so much for joining me. I'm so interested to chat to you because you've actually just recently opened your practice. I mean, how long has your practice been open? Um, yeah, we opened in October, on the 20th of October, um, but sort of, we didn't really sort of kick off till after Christmas. So it's sort of only been about six months that we've been open now. So I'm guessing that there've been a few challenges in the first six months. Yes, there's always challenges. <laughs> From going, where's that water coming for, from? If you, as you find a hole in the uh, in the pipe under the the pool, but um, all of these challenges, yes, can be quite easily fixed, which is good. So, Kirsty, was this your your first profession that you you've done canine hydrotherapy? No, I've always I've always been in the leisure industry, like um, sort of like mostly like leisure centres and stuff, because I was a swim teacher and I ran my own swim school as well. Um, but okay. I've always had, always had a passion for dogs and um, a passion for the benefits of hydrotherapy and for water. Um, and it just feels so natural for me to be doing. It just feels like what I should have always been doing. Really? So you've gone from swimming, peep, did you do people or children um, to, to animals? Yep. Yeah, children and adults. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay. They are very, it's, not, it's not really swimming, teaching dogs to swim is it it's <laughs> <laughs> so so how long were you were you doing um human swimming before you you know how long had you been doing that before you realized that actually i, I should be 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 treating animals about 20 years oh wow <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay but you must have got quite a good base then with uh, you know water quality control and things like that because surely with the pool there's a lot of a lot of that kind of stuff that you already know now yeah so all the plant room and everything like that so all the water quality um yeah I've had a quite a lot of experience with that and also just running my own business um as well so working with staff and um everything that comes with running a business so how many staff have you got now? Um, we've currently employed um, one staff member in February, um, and then we'll be looking at employing more in the future. And run us through sort of basically what um, your setup looks like. So what have you, what have you got there? Yeah, so we have a hydrotherapy swimming pool, which is six metres by three metres, um, and it's half in ground so we actually have raised the floor so it looks like it's half in half out um, and then we have like external ramps coming up and around um, and we've made those quite um, you know not very steep to get in um, and with showers and I've also got a um, underwater treadmill we've also built um, a physiotherapy conditioning area um, so we have a physiotherapist that comes and runs clinics from our center as well Awesome. So that must have been quite a, a big financial outlay in the beginning. Did you need to get loans to do that? Um, we did for the treadmill. We did have to get a loan for the treadmill. Um, but for the rest of it, we used um, what um, the other business had made. So we were managed to transfer mm -hmm. that over. Some savings, but yeah. yeah it is, it's a big investment. Huge, <laughs> huge. Businesses. And, and do you do you own the property or are you renting the property? Um, yeah, we've started out where we're leasing a warehouse unit. Um, yeah, so we've started out that way. Yeah, it's it's always a tricky one, to, especially when you're you're making changes to a property that you don't own. You know, so is is the pool? Um, you know, could you move it if you had to move um, location, or is it pretty set in? Have you actually built it in? 
No, so the um, pool has got like a metal frame around it. So no, everything can be taken out and moved and the treadmill can be moved as well. We've got um, partition walls so they can quite easily be moved um, in the way that the plant room set up as well. So if we do need to move um, the business, then we can do that quite easily. Okay. And what does a, a week look like for Kirsty? So like, do you have a, a day that you do some admin or are you just consulting whenever you can get clients? I mean, because especially in that, that first year when you're building up, you know, I, I remember from, from when I had my clinic, it was so erratic, you know, like one week you had a whole lot of clients and then the next week it was dead. And then you'd think like, oh no, like, is this what it's going to be like? Um, but it's always up and down in that sort of first year. So how does your week um, look at the moment? Yeah, so general sort of week. So Monday is sort of like pool maintenance day. So we sort of make sure that everything's like, you know, tidied and all the water quality and like super chlorinated and everything over the weekend. Um, so, and Monday's a lot of admin day. So we do that because obviously marketing is quite a big one as a new business. Um, I have a late night on a Tuesday um, and I manage to sort of like consolidate all of my clients. I try and put them together um, so that I'm not having to, you know, two or three hours to wait for the next client. So, um, and then we ha we currently are doing every second Saturday. Um, and to do that, I've got like a whole flyball team that come in um, as well. So our Saturdays can be like for like nine till six. Um, we've sure. also started like a um, puppy swim, play and train program with a local dog trainer so we sort of work together doing that as well um so lots of like little workshops and stuff like I wasn't here on Sunday but um one of the girls she ran a canine first aid course so I quite like working together with other professionals um as well but it also it's quite good for other people in the pet industry to come and see my center and and then they know about it Oh, that's awesome. So do you just do you just get a, a fee for them to use your premises for the day? How does it work? Yeah, so they usually it's like a higherage fee and then a percentage of like the um, the sales that they have. So we just work awesome. that out. With them. Yeah, which is really good. Yeah, I mean, especially when, um, you know, especially on the weekends, you know, if the if you're not actually consulting or seeing patients, then it's good for the premises to be making money um, like a Sunday because a lot of us don't consult on Sundays. So that's and that's usually when people do workshops and do extra training and things. So that's a great idea. Tell yeah, me a little bit. Tell me a little bit about your marketing and, you know, especially in the early days when you when you first open, um, it takes quite a while for people to know you. What what kind of marketing are you doing at the moment? Yeah, so I, have, um, I do all social media marketing um, and I've also built some relationships with the local newspapers. Um, so if I do have any press releases or anything like that, I can send them straight out. And I usually write up a basic press release um, with information and quotes on it. And then I send that directly to um, the press for them to use and also some photos. Um, so that's quite good. We also have like a pet photographer that came um, and she's taken photos of dogs. Um, and also she did like we did a, like a group dog walk and she came and took photos for that as well. So it's quite good to have some professional photos I can send to the newspapers um, as well. Social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, are the main ones that I use um, at the moment. Blogging, that's always another one. Um, <laughs> I'm quite yeah. lucky because I've got quite a big network. Um, of bloggers that are around as well so um, I just invite them to do some guest blogging. <laughs> yeah that's a great way because most of us don't have time to blog um, you know Not treating enough, patients no. running our practices um, so if you've got guests and people there are lots of people lots of pet bloggers that love guest blogging so it's a great idea. Yeah so one of the um, dog um, trainers she um, she did a blog for me for um, dogs that are housebound on cage rest which is perfect for dogs who you know um, need to be on reduced or restricted exercise. Awesome and it's so great that you've got such a good relationship with the press 
Um, I had the same thing, you know, with my practice and the press absolutely love what we do because it's so exciting and there's usually a case that's paralyzed and then it walks again. So it's, it's very newsworthy, the kind of things that we do. Um, so whenever I had an interesting case, I would contact them and they'd be, they'd come down straight away and um, report on it and getting that um, press and that um, exposure in newspapers and magazines is always great. Yeah, it is. So, I mean, amazingly, you guys have been open for like eight months or so, and you've actually already won an award, haven't you? A few, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tell, us, tell us about all the awards you've won. Um, yeah, so we became um, startup business, or finalists for startup business um, of the year. Um, that was with the Federation of Small Businesses. Um, we've won Small Business Sunday, which is Theo Pafetis' award. So he picked my business um, from his Twitter award. So then I get to go and meet him. Awesome. And then, um, yeah, so the, the latest one is from the Pet Product um, magazine. And they picked me as being the best K900 Therapy Centre in Yorkshire. Oh, um, amazing. They, they actually had um, 150, because it's a global, a national, like it's a global award, and they had 152 hydrotherapy centre into the category, and only four of us won. And my friends won as well, which is exciting too. <laughs> awesome. Well, you, you must be so proud of yourself. I mean, especially considering that you've only been open for, for eight months or so. Um, to I actually didn't know about the first two awards, so congratulations on those two. But I did see in social media the um, Best Hydrotherapy Centre in Yorkshire. So well done. That's, a, that's an awesome achievement to start off with. You, you've set, you set the bar half for yourself. So, I mean, I, I don't know what's, what's on the cards going forward now if you've already won three awards in eight months. Yeah, <laughs> I know, I know, but I'm still, yeah, um, there's a few still I want to want to win, and obviously I would like to go meet Theo for Peter, so that would be really good. Yeah, awesome. So um, you, you obviously said that you had a physio that came and she does some clinics and things there. Um, what are your plans sort of going forward now to when you expand? So sort of the next five years, where do you hope to see Fit for Dogs? Um, yeah, so I see building the team bigger, so obviously having more staff, um, and I'd probably just like to get that sort of like, get all my, you know, procedures in place, because I think that's quite important, so I think just over the next five years, just to, you know, just to have a really clean, smooth running practice, um, and with some really good team and staff. Yeah, the systems are so important. I mean, I recall, you know, when I had one staff member, everything's easy because you're just talking to one another. And as soon as you start adding people in, when your systems and procedures are not in place, then things start to fall apart and then your stress levels go sky high. Um, so, and it's the kind of thing that you just have to iron out sort of over the, over the years, you know, and things change. They also are changing. Um, those procedures and systems depending on the people and what's happening there. Um, but I think that's, um, that's a very good plan. Yes, and hopefully and, then I can sort of step back a little bit and not be like in the front, front of it all, all the time. <laughs> yeah, so I mean at the moment are you doing most of the consulting? So your one staff member, what is their job? Yeah, so it's me, so I do most of the consulting and then we sort of like, um, my other staff member, she is currently doing a course, so she should be finished by the end of this month and qualified. Um, and so we sort of like, yeah, we double up in team and she mostly assists, assists me. Okay, so, yeah, and <laughs> what do you like with delegating? Are you, are you good at delegating or are you like most... Um, vet rehab therapists where they like to do everything themselves. No, I'm quite happy to delegate. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Even to my husband. <laughs> <laughs> Does he help you out at the practice? Yeah, so Mike actually built the whole centre himself. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, so he built like all the pool and the plant room and everything, um, even all the walls. Yeah, so he built the whole thing. Um, so yeah, he's um, quite 
quite good actually just you know maintaining all the day-to-day -day stuff as well which is really nice so then I'm free to do a bit more of the marketing side so you've got an in-house handyman that's very convenient yeah it's very very yeah, <laughs> when I phone him up and say oh this has happened and he'll be like oh I'm coming down now and it was like the treadmill I, I just didn't push the filter down properly and it just all the water kept going I was like the water's going somewhere and he's like oh I'm coming down now so he just was like fixed it in like two seconds <laughs> that's so very, very handy. handy to have very, very handy. I've also got a very handy um husband but he's so hectic at work he he was never able to help me <laughs> so um <laughs> luckily my, my one staff member was was very very good with the treadmills she seemed to manage it so if there was something major um, she usually fixed it. Otherwise, we'd have to call the the treadmill people out. Um, but it's good it's good to have someone to call on, um, especially with those kind of things. So yeah. I remember once we had like a um, a storm or something like that, and there was something wrong with the transformer or the connection, and something blew in the box. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we were I was beside myself. I thought, oh my gosh, the treadmill like is it, is it going to be able to be fixed easily and it was it was actually easy it was one part or so that had to be changed um but that was really stressful it would have been nice to have somebody to come straight away and settle my mind i remember i had a day or two of um very being very very uneasy mm, yeah so Kirsty, tell me now um you've got a family so how is it you know how is having a new business and how does that sort of affect your personal life yeah, so I think what I was with this business, I was like, right, I'm going to make sure I block out time for, you know, my family and for, for friends. So tonight, you know, I'm, I won't be going in because, um, well, we don't go Mondays anyway, but it's Cole's show. He's doing a performance in a theatre tonight. So I make sure that if there's anything special that I just, you know, can block out that time. Um, and over the last four days, um, I just went away for a girls weekend so it is and now because I've had that break I feel refreshed and renewed and energized to get back on the business again and I think it's just you do get so caught up in every day just because when it's your new business you just think about it all the time so it's really important to make sure that you've just got that space sometimes just to have even if it's an hour just to go right that's it I'm just gonna it's my time just for me and then you can come back to it and I think you know that's really important just to, to make sure that you block out that time yeah I th and I think being conscious of it is the first thing um so just to know that you need to do that because um I think burnout is a big big problem um especially because we have you know we're doing we're dealing with a lot of patients that there's a lot of emotions um, so we have a lot of things, not just the work, um, it's also the emotions with dealing with the type of patients that we're dealing with. So it's important that we do um, get some time. So well done on that. And the girls weekend sounds fabulous. So do you do any, any sports or anything like that? Do you have any sports or hobbies that you do? I was thinking about that. What sports and hobbies do I do? Um, we do quite a lot of stuff with the kids, like the kids go like surfing and um, in summer they love to just like be at the beach and stuff like that. So, you know, we do spend a lot of time doing those sort of things. Um, the kids love to be outside. Well, if I can get them off the Xbox, of course. Um, but like we do take them kayaking and everything like that. So we do spend a lot of time doing those sort of things, um, you know, just going to like the forest and tree climbing and stuff like that so I, I quite like doing stuff like that and have you got your your own pets Kirsty? yes i've got um, my dog tui he's a border collie cross cockapoo so he is full on <laughs> so and and does he have any ailments or is he healthy um he's pretty healthy actually but i think you sort of like you just sort of like hang on it might be limping a little bit but yeah <laughs> Well, you put them on the stance, you know, you practice different things like put them on the stance analyzer and then it's just like, oh, hang on. <laughs> he's not perfect, but not, you know, so, but no, he is, he's really good. He's fine. And do you, do you use him for a model for all your, your photo shoots? I do. Yeah. yeah. But then my friend was like, he's a black dog. You shouldn't be using him as a model because black dogs, I'm like, it doesn't take good photos. It's like, he takes beautiful photos. <laughs> 
<laughs> is it cooperative? Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So I, I have a wire hair Jack Russell called Sushi, who is the most uncooperative dog. So oh. we could never use we could never use my dog at all. Um we had to use one of the staff members, very well trained ridgebacks. Um Sushi is she just never did what she was supposed to. I just had a girl, she had um she's doing a photography assignment and she came in to see me and she's got, oh, I've got to do this whole it's like a two page press release of it, like a story. And she's like, oh, I'd like to come and do your business because she's made a video for us before. Um, because she brought a dog for a swim and she loves it. And um but she spent a whole day just taking photos. So um I'm hopefully we'll get some really good photography photos from here so and she had some very cute dogs to take photos of so that's quite nice oh that's <laughs> nice <laughs> awesome yeah Kirsty, it's been wonderful chatting to you thank you for sharing everything about your practice and I just want to say congratulations you seem like you're doing an awesome 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 job um eight months in and I'm looking forward to hearing in sort of in a year or two how things are going at fit for dogs oh that's great thank you so much Awesome, Gizzy. Have a great evening. Enjoy the concert tonight. I will. See you later. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Vet Rehabbers, thanks for listening to my podcast. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and it would be great if you could leave me a review. I want to know what are you doing on the 15th to the 17th of November? It is our Vet Rehab Summit, which is our online virtual conference for veterinary rehab professionals. Find out more information at onlinepetals.com.